just come across this one and I'm not quite sure what it is. Is it a ground squirrel? Hey, what are you doing? What are you? <laughs> oh, it's so cute. I think this little guy wants to be my friend. He keeps following me up the trail. He's so funny. Oh, he's decided to go up there. I've got a right mixture for lunch today. In here I've actually put some instant grits and then a load of broccoli that I've chopped up, boiled all that up together and I've added some red chillies, olive oil and a whole load of nuts and seeds and um, sultanas and then I've got my super greens drink here on the side as well. I've just had a lovely lunch at this spot down here. It was so nice because the scenery is absolutely beautiful here and there's a bit of breeze as well. It has been a very tough and challenging morning because I, I do struggle with the heat, I really do. I find it very hard to stay cool and I, as much as I'm drinking and as much as I'm eating the right things and using re rehydration salts, I've always been somebody that struggles in heat. It's just how I am. So I go very, very slowly. And another thing I don't do is video myself too much because I've not really got a lot to say when I'm climbing up a hill in the heat, apart from <laughs> which is probably all I'll actually manage. So I don't see the point of just providing content for the sake of content when there's not much to say. Obviously, if there's something interesting to show you or the scenery is good or just to show you the scenery, then I will do. But generally, just imagine me huffing and puffing up a hill. That's pretty much what I've been doing. And that's another reason why I have been linking some of my days together on videos. So to start out with, I did it as a daily vlog. So day one, day two, but every now and then you'll see certain days combined together. And that's usually because not a lot's happened or I've been on my own or the scenery hasn't changed so much. So rather than just let you sit there for 10, 15 minutes, getting a little bit bored perhaps, which is what I don't want to happen. I tend to just stick my videos together on certain days. So I hope that's okay with everybody. And I am now gonna carry on to the next water source. I've done it just over 10 miles so far today and I've got about another four miles to get to water. And then I'll just see how I feel after that and see how many more miles I fancy doing. I'm, I'd like to aim for a minimum of 17, 18 because I would really like to get into um, Lake Isabella at the latest Sunday morning because what I want to do is have an evening there. I have got a resupply box that I sent to myself so I can pick that up on Monday.
Good morning. I had such a good sleep last night. I'll show you around my campsite in a minute, but oh, it was so nice. I did about 20 miles yesterday. It was a pretty tough day. The um, weather was extremely hot and it was uphill quite a lot. I was tired. I hadn't slept very well for the last few nights, especially the night before with all the ants. Oh my gosh, that was absolutely horrendous. It honestly was something like out of a horror film. It was, oh gosh, I hated every minute of it. I literally put my tent up and then all the ants within about two minutes started swarming the tent and I'd walked away from the tent because I thought I'll walk to the top of the hill take some photographs and come back down again and when I came back down honestly it's like oh my, I can't <laughs> it was something out your worst nightmare and I literally spent about half an hour 40 minutes trying to get rid of all these ants away from the door so I could jump in the tent and then zip it back up again on myself thinking that they might go away after an hour that was probably at about six o'clock and at three o'clock the following morning they were still swarming my tent. I think they on, on I think they went to bed. Oh, sorry, I <laughs> had a spider on me then. <laughs> I love the outdoors but I really hate insects. Um, <laughs> so I think, yeah, ants go to sleep around about 20 past three around here so that's usually what happens. And luckily I woke up the next morning and my tent was clear so I literally packed up my things as quickly as possible and made a run for it because <laughs> I could see them waking up they were starting to come out their little hole um, and I had breakfast along the trail and I didn't do a lot of filming yesterday because to be honest some days it's really tough because you, you you're kind of boiling hot you've got an elevation all I was literally doing was huffing and puffing going uphill trying to breathe trying to keep cool stopping every few seconds and sometimes the last thing you want to do is get a camera out so just picture the scene there's me walking up a hill as bright red as you can possibly imagine probably redder than a tomato between tomato and beetroot that's probably the color i was <laughs> dripping with sweat um just kind of going like that <laughs> that was pretty much me yesterday despite how much water i drink despite what electrolytes i take i am just not good in the heat that is just me it's just how i am so i think today is going to be another warm day and i've also got a 35 mile dry section now so when i set off now i've literally got no water for 35 uh, 35 miles so what i want to do is try and do over 20 miles today if i can and I'll probably break that up and do a lot of that this evening while the weather's cooler so I'm not having to drink as much water and then I'll get up early tomorrow morning and then hit the remaining 15 or hopefully a lot less and then get to water in the afternoon so that is my plan but speaking of horror films so I had the horrible ant incident last night and I've got to show you something I got up from camp this morning which I'll show you now you can actually see my tent behind me here so I've got a beautiful spot in the middle of this forest. It's absolutely gorgeous. I loved it last night. But then I walk around the corner, as you do at camp, and have a little explore. And let me show you what I found. So this is literally a few steps away from my tent. And as I walk around, honestly, it gave me chills. And I don't know why, but it was just weird. So <laughs> it's a suitcase with kind of mouldy things in it and some clothes strewn around and it, I don't know, it just completely freaked me out last night and then over here you can see all these tin cans that have all rusted so they've obviously been here a while but I don't know, there was just something about it that was a little bit freaky it was just, I don't know it just kind of makes you wonder what actually happened and whose they are and why they're still there it was just so strange because it's it's not like it's a backpack it's an actual suitcase so i think i've read too many horror horror books and seen too many scary films but yeah that was interesting yesterday but today should be a good day the scenery is supposed to be really nice today as well and it's quite different so i will keep you updated as the day goes
along the trail there's always little trail register type boxes like this and what you do is you just fill your name in and where you're from and it just helps people keep a track of where you are especially if you're traveling on your own it's a good way of people if anything ever goes wrong of finding out where you last were so whenever you get to one of these always fill them in and always make sure you use hand sanitizer afterwards because you don't know who's used the pen before you <laughs> just got to this road crossing and the PCT carries on up there but what I've got to do is go down this road by about quarter of a mile because that's where the last water is for about 35 miles there is going to be caches apparently along the way but I've already been to a number of caches now that have been completely empty even though people have said that they were full that morning and I just don't want to rely on it so I'm going to go pick up my full capacity of water which is about six litres that works out at over 13 pounds of weight so it's a lot to carry but i think it's worth it because there's so many people that are getting caught out by presuming that the cache is going to be full or having to get off trail i've done it once where i've carried my bare minimum and that was when i got on from tehachapi and what i did was i carried enough to get myself to the to the highway 58 because i thought there'd be a cache there but if that cache was going to be empty, I knew I had a get out clause because I could just get on the road and go back to Tehachapi and fill up my water. But luckily there was enough there to keep me going. But I'm not taking the risk on the, this section because apparently it's very hard to get off trail. It's quite remote and I just don't think it's worth it. So I'm going to carry six litres and that should last me the 35 miles and I will see how I get on with it. you expect to injure yourself a number of different ways hiking the PCT from either going over on your ankle getting blisters scratching your leg on a bush any kind of these things you'd expect to do but yes I've actually got my antiseptic cream out for the very first time today and <laughs> it's because I had butted a bush <laughs> or a tree should I say this is the said tree evil tree it's these prickles here I think it's a Joshua tree I'm not quite sure but I went to put my bag down and literally banged the side of my head right into these sharp point things and they went straight in and yes there was a lot of blood <laughs> um, I, had, I was a little concerned for myself for a while because was, there was quite a lot of blood I was surprised how much there was but it did sting a lot so I'm not surprised um, and now I've got quite a bump on my head so I thought I'd best put some cream on it it's like an antibiotic stroke antiseptic cream that I've got so it's not stinging as bad anymore and it has stopped bleeding and I feel alright I've not got double vision I'm not seeing things so I'm alright <laughs> 
but I have been stopped for about an hour now. I've had some lunch and I've been taking it steady because it's been so exposed over the last few hours on this section. It has been very dry, very hot, and it's been beautiful. The scenery is absolutely gorgeous. It's so nice. And the wind's just starting to pick up now, which is good because it's going to keep it cool. But I've done about 11 and a half miles so far, and I know there's a campsite in about another 11 and a half miles, I think. So that's not too bad. Um, I should get there by this evening, which means tomorrow I've only got about 12 miles to go till there's guaranteed water, which is good. So everything's going to plan. And it really has been a beautiful day. It's a gorgeous section of the trail, but it is extremely exposed. It's, you feel kind of like raw out here. Everything's just there and you, there's no getting away from it. This is one of the first trees that I saw that I came across. And <laughs> there's no wonder nobody was sitting under it with those great big spiky things at you. <laughs> 